May 8th, as part of its spring term sustainability project, Clackamas Community College hosted Dr. Mark Hickson, a professor from Oregon State University's Department of Zoology. Dr. Hickson came to talk about global warming and its effects on the Pacific Northwest. His primary focus was on the coral reef and how it's being threatened by our warming climate. What that means is that our ocean ecosystems are changing. Exactly how they're going to change, we don't know. This is a large plant-wide experiment that we're conducting by adding excess CO2 into the atmosphere by burning all these fossil fuels. Uh, we're getting some of our best anti-tumor medicines, anti-cancer medicines from coral reef organisms. And coral reefs feed a huge number of people um, in areas adjacent to them. So they're very important ecosystems. These are truly the most complex systems in the ocean. And unfortunately, these systems are going from looking something like this in many places of the world to basically piles of rock. Everything we do in this nation is contributing to this. Because we, in the United States, about 5% of the Earth's population are responsible for about a quarter of all the carbon emissions taking place in the world. And it's these carbon emissions that are causing the warming, that are causing these effects on the waves. Second is this phenomenon called coral bleaching. But these symbionts feed the coral. They photosynthesize. The corals sort of are shaped like plants. They capture the sun's rays. Those little single-celled plants feed the corals some of their some of their photosynthetic products. And the corals provide a home, a place to live exposure to the sun for the symbionts and also feed the symbionts their nitrogenous waste. So sort of a mutual feeding mutualism or symbiosis as people often call it. Okay. Very nice arrangement. But what happens when the water becomes very warm is that these symbionts stop benefiting the corals and start becoming parasitic. That is they take more from the coral than they give the coral. So the only way the corals can even hope to survive at that stage is to expel those symbionts, to literally expel them from their system. And once they do that, the corals no longer have color because it's those little symbiotic cells that give coral their sort of greenish, brownish, mustardy color that they typically have. And once those symbionts are gone, that's when we say the coral has been bleached. It's not really bleaching. It's not hydrogen peroxide or Clorox or anything. It's just that the corals, have, in a desperation, have gotten rid of these symbionts that have become parasitic. The issue having to do with carbon dioxide is that it is absorbed by seawater. It becomes dissolved in seawater. And once it does so, it forms an acid. It interacts with water molecules and forms carbonic acid, the same stuff we see in soda cans. Carbonic acid is an acid, and acid dissolves limestone. And limestone is essentially calcium carbonate. So what essentially happens chemically is that the calcium carbonate that forms the skeletons of corals, as well as a whole variety of other organisms, they lose their ability to secrete and create their own skeletons. They lower that rate, that rate of calcification. This slide is going to actually show the projection of, of course, of the pre-industrial times all the way up to 2100. This is actually, I've been told, a very accurate map because seawater chemistry is very simple. It's very easy to calculate how acidic seawater is going to be as a function of two things mostly, temperature, clear time. The redder the area, the better it is for calcifying organisms. The bluer the area, the worse it is for calcifying organisms. We're now at 19, around every five years, 1930s. Just watch how this progresses. So by the end of the century, conditions for coral reefs are going to be marginal in their existing range in terms of calcification. But even worse 
are, are for those of us who live closer to the poles. Thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate you all being here. You're a small, excellent modernist. <laughs>